<laughs> Driving it on Jackson Davis. Goes a block by Jackson Davis. He roofed him. Loose ball. He has blocked again by the rookie. Paul comes out of the, the pack with it. Down the right sideline. The crowd roars its approval. Curry dribbles around Giannis to the rim. Lob. Jackson oh. Davis for the dunk. A no-look lob by Curry. Slams it down. Doc Rivers has to stop the noise. Timeout Milwaukee. And the rookie from Indiana supply the needed energy here as we take the break. Hey, Dub Nation, it's Trace Jackson Davis, and you're listening to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. No, you're about to be listening to Trace Jackson Davis, actually, on Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. And I don't want to waste any time. We welcome him in. Can you take us through that moment that we just heard the play-by-play of and give us your perspective? Um, <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, just Gone out there, um, obviously coach called my name. He said, you got Giannis and um, kind of backed up off of him a little bit, gave him a little space and then took the bump, got one block and then the reaction just going up because he's quick and then getting the second one. And then obviously when you get a big play like that, you want to get out and run. So first I was looking to screen for C, throw it to Steph, get in the dunker and then Steph got past him, draw it to him and then lob. So, uh, it was a great play. Um, the fans, electric. And so I'm just happy I could be a part of it. Does time stop in that moment for you at all? I mean, you block Giannis once, you block him twice, you run the floor, you get it back, you throw the dunk, the crowd goes wild. I know you're you're going up and down and your adrenaline must be through the roof, but do you now have a moment to reflect back and kind of say, yeah, I belong in the association? Yeah, most definitely. Um at the beginning of the year, things were a little quick. Um, Speed-wise, uh, just trying to slow down, slow down in the game. Um, but now I feel like just when I get in, I know I belong out there. Um, just continue to play hard, um, work on the things that I do in practice. Um, the coaches do a really good job with the development. And so just do those things, and um, they put they put me in position to succeed. And so I just continue just to work and um, just let God take care of the rest. Trace, how would you put into words what happens to your mind and body when coach looks at you and goes, you got Giannis? Um, it's it's surreal. It's a surreal moment. Uh, Giannis is one of the best players in the NBA, and so just being, being able to take on that challenge, um, he's a great player. Uh, obviously, he's a load. He's hard to stop, but at the same time, just trying to make it challenging for him and um, do whatever I can to make him miss some shots. Uh, Dibs just asked you kind of the I belong question, and you were referencing the beginning of the year when things were going fast. Uh, but, yeah. but but was there something earlier than, than the other night that was your I belong moment? Yes, I think that um, the Celtics game was, was really the first time we played them was really my uh, I belong moment. Um, just being able to go in there and make an impact on the game and then being, being able to close it, I think they still had the best record in the NBA. Uh, getting that block on Jalen Brown, getting a dunk in overtime, and then uh, helping uh, tip the pass out to CP so Steph could hit that rainbow three. I thought it was, I thought that was like, if you play hard, then you, you definitely got a chance. So, yeah, and a double double there and a plus twenty five that night in a huge win over Boston. And it's been up and down in your rookie year. And last night was one that we'll you know kind of put to the side because we're all. Probably not as disappointed as you guys, but fans are a little bit bummed. How have you been able to cope with sort of the the ups and downs of your first NBA season? Um, you got to put everything into perspective. Um, obviously, this is an organization that um, they win, and they've done it at a high level for the past decade. And so the coaches, everyone in the front office, they know what they're doing. Um, they know how to develop their talent and um we just got to listen to what coach is doing. And so that's, that's what I've been doing. Um, you can't get too high. You can't get too low on the season. Obviously we had a great game against Milwaukee and then dropped one against Chicago yesterday. And we're mad about that, but we're going to watch the film and we're going to get better. And then we got the Spurs tomorrow. And so that's just, that's just how it is. You just, you can't get too high on things when things are going well, but you can't get too low because uh, the NBA schedule is 82 games. So they just keep coming. Trace Jackson Davis is with us on Willard and Dibs, 95.7 The Game. 
Trace, that that last answer. Uh, totally receive that. Get it. That said, I see you guys as a playoff team, and one game over five hundred at home is confusing to me. Why? Why have you guys not had a better record at home? You think? Um, I, I think it's there's a lot of things that go into that. Um, we've been missing some guys, um, especially during that stretch in December and early January. Dre and Chris were out. And so um, I think just the more that we're going to be able to play together, um, the better that we're going to be. And I think that even in the last month, we've been playing our best basketball. Um, obviously, Steph rolled his ankle, so we're going to see how that plays out. But um, at the end of the day, uh, we're just going to continue to play hard, play for each other. And um, we got 12 to 14 guys that we can play. So we're a really deep team, and we're just going to do whatever we can to grind out wins. And you now are firmly entrenched, at least in my opinion, in that nine or ten man rotation. You've gone from being in that twelve to fourteen range to now being a mainstay. What have you done personally and professionally to get yourself in your rookie year into the spot where you're now a regular, legit contributor for a team that should be in the playoffs? Um, well, first and foremost, is credit to the vets, uh, Loon, Dre. Dario, guys like that that have helped guided me just to get to that spot. Um, they've been a big help, especially Lone. Um, he's helped me a lot. And he's really probably my my vet. Like, who I talk to, we go to chapel together and stuff of that nature. And um, if you see something on the floor, it'll help me with that as well. But um, other than that, I think that um, just the work that I put in and um, just waiting my turn, really, just knowing, Coach said at the beginning of the year that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a chance to play. Um, I remember that he said that on after we got drafted, me and BP went to dinner with him, and he was like, you're going to have a chance to play. So just make the most of your opportunity. And so I've just been trying to capitalize on every opportunity I get. Trace, I feel like every time you have a few good games, that draft conversation reboots and people scratch their head and go, why the hell was this guy available at number 57, I know you've shared a little bit about it back then, but but can you sort of uh, reboot that for our audience in terms of like what that what that night was like and how you ended up with the Warriors? Um, the night was uh, it was a little crazy. It was a little shocking. Um, so my agents, well, my main agent James Dunleavy is obviously Mike's brother, um, our GM, and so. Um, I guess they had, they were talking behind the scenes, but they didn't want to tell me anything because they, James wanted me to go to the Golden State because he thought that was the best fit. But there was three or four other teams that were looking to get me between like 20 and 40. But James said that they didn't want to be on a two way. And so they said, if you offer him a main, like a roster spot, then we'll come. But uh, the Warriors were the only team that said, we'll offer you that. And by pick 35-ish, I think they were trying to get another pick. And then I didn't know this at the time, so I was upset. So I'm just watching the draft and watching all these dudes go before me. And then by pick 50, I'm like, okay, I'm upset. I'm tweeting this out. <laughs> <And> so <laughs> I'm like, all right. And then pick 57 comes and then, uh, they finally got one and then everything squared away. And so, and then they told me afterwards that they were trying to get a pick from pick 35. I said, well, if I would have known that, I probably wouldn't have tweeted that out, but it is what it is. Right. Right. And what was the tweet as that was going on? Was it cause I, we, you know, Mark and I both work with a lot of young people and we try to advise to be careful what you tweet. Did, did you, you didn't fly off the handle. Did you trace? No, I didn't fly off the handle. I was, I was, because it was it was mostly like I know Indiana is my hometown, so a lot of people thought I was directed towards the Pacers, but it it wasn't necessarily directed towards the Pacers. Um, there was there was four or five teams that I worked out for that said that they really liked me um, between like pick twenty and forty, and so um, it was really directed towards them. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. Uh, I was going to play with the chip on my shoulder regardless, and so. And I think the tweets aged pretty well so far. Yeah, I'm going to check, your, your, check yeah. your feed to see what I can find. <laughs> unless you deleted them. Scrolling, yeah, I'm not scroll. Do a little uh, scroll here. <laughs> Trace Jackson Davis is with us here on uh, 
on Willard and Dibbs. Hey, um, the report is out there that, that maybe Steph is just a few games, but w- whatever it is, what is your perspective on on how roles change if uh, if Steph's not there? Um, we have we have the next man up mentality. Um, obviously, Steph's that's the leader. Uh, he's the catalyst of our offense, and so but we have other guards: Chris, uh, Clay, uh, BP, Moses. All all those guys can step up at any given time, and so. Um, it's just got to be a next man up mentality, and we just got to play together. Um, I think that when we play together and we play at a high level, um, we're still really, really tough to beat. Seeing Pods, your fellow rookie, emerge a little bit earlier than you this season, did that give you a shot of confidence that you know if he can go out there as a rook and make that impact, that then you could too? Oh, absolutely. Me and BP have a great relationship, and um, he does not like any confidence, and I really love that about him. Um, Obviously, you wish he could have got that one last night, but we told him after the game there's going to be many more like that. And just to be in that situation and get those reps at the end of the game, it just shows all the work that you've put in. And so um, he's going to continue to shine and continue to bring that juice and confidence to our team because we really need it. Um, he brings a lot of energy. And, um, yeah, but for him, just seeing how he succeeded, uh, um, it gives you confidence and you could do the same thing. Did you guys share any conversation after that play last night? Oh uh, yeah, we just we obviously we talk about it a little bit. Um, I was just basically telling him you're going to get that opportunity again. You really young into your career. Um, me and you both are, but um, it's just surreal just being out there at the end of the game um, at Chase Center, two rookies on the floor. I thought it was I thought it was a surreal moment. You got San Antonio coming up a couple of times. Looks like Victor Wembanyama won't play in the first one. Is there a little disappointment that maybe you won't get a chance to go head to head against a guy who is maybe the most unique player we've seen in a generation? Yeah, uh, he's he's surreal. Um, he, he's a talent I don't think a lot of like no one's ever seen before. Um, but um, yeah, obviously you want to go up against the best and you want to play against the best. Um, at the end of the day, we're going to be prepared for anything. If he plays, if he doesn't play, we'll see. Um, but we're just going to have to act like he's going to be out on the floor regardless. We can't we can't play um, any other way. TJD is with us here on Willard and Dibs, 95-7 the game. Speaking of roles, Trace, uh, they've been on the move, obviously, all year long for a lot of you guys. There's been a lot of searching and, and trial and error. I wonder what the most recent conversation was as you guys came back to health. Like, like what has Steve Kerr told you about your your current role and plan? Um, well, for me, he basically just told me that um, they're, they're trying to, I think I read that they're trying to get me ready for the playoffs. And so, but um, the biggest thing that he's told our team so far is that, um, uh, the roles are just constantly changing and um, you never know when your name's going to get called. And so um, being a professional, and I think that our team has done just a great job of that. Um, guys like Lone, Moses, Dario, um, who have been great in their careers, um, having to take a back seat for a little bit, but just still being great vets. And then Moses always being ready to play whenever his name gets called and just doing it at such a high level. Um, it's great. It's great to see. And it's just great that we have that camaraderie, camaraderie, camaraderie on our team <laughs> to, to where we can, we can do that. And we have relationships to where we still want, to, want what's best for the team. Yeah. And that comes from the head coach who uh, many fans will accuse of not being able to develop young players, but here you are a young player who's developing and your rookie year has been a bit of an up and down whirlwind. Is there a player that you've looked forward to facing or one that you've already faced who kind of gave you that little bit of a wow moment? Um, yeah, I think that the player, my welcome to the NBA moment was playing Luca, but a player that like I've always wanted to play against is LeBron. Um, so having playing against LeBron and chase center, um, being able to experience that, I thought that was really surreal. Trace, yeah. do, do you guys have a poker tournament tonight? <laughs> yes, we do, actually. Whoa. All yeah. right. Now, is everybody on equal footing, or are the rookies getting the drinks, or what's what's happening here? 
I have no idea how it works out. I just show up and just get told what to do, basically. <laughs> how would you describe your strategy as a poker player? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I can give that out because maybe some of the guys are listening. So. Oh, interesting. I think that is your strategy then as a poker player. You keep it a little close <laughs> to the vest, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. All right. All right. I love it. Um, well, Trace... Uh, absolutely wonderful to have you, and uh, I hope you know this, and I think you feel it. Like, you really brought Chase Center uh, to its feet the other night. You got a lot of fans out here. I, I wonder what that that sort of portion of your job has has been like, kind of a, how you've watched your relationship grow with the fans. Yeah, so um, just with the fans, um, they're great. And then, um, but what I try to do, I try to come in, I try, try to provide energy, make energy plays, impact plays, plays that will get uh, our team off the f off off their feet, um, and bring an energy and life to the crowd. And so that's that's tried what I did at Indiana, tried to spark them. And so just and that all comes with playing hard. And so whenever I'm on the court, I'm trying to play as hard as I can. Um, by the way, Trace, awesome. the, the the reason we knew about your poker tournament is Steve's coming on in an hour, Ooh. and we moved him we moved him up a little bit uh, so that you guys could have your, uh, your your poker tournament, or he could be there on time. Um, yeah. Is there anything that we can do to sort of help your strategy? Yeah, anything, throw him off, right? Anything you want us to say to him on your behalf? Uh, no, I think I'm good. Or the just like coming for him, or like you know, <laughs> he's coming for him. Okay, or, I like or that. If you beat him, like how about thirty minutes a night, something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, hey, that's fine. Okay, we'll do I it. I like it. All right, Trace. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, there it is, Trace Jackson Davis. Man.